Hey people, Zara Swamp here, and welcome to episode 48 of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we, we uh, sorry, we were go, we were cross examining Emma. We discovered that oh, Joe Tark was actually the one being held by the knife point, which that knife was the King of Prosecutor's knife that Neil Marshall won, that he was holding, and that Emma possibly, and that Emma possibly killed her, killed. Eh, killed me a marshal, but we know that's gang. Come on, it's obvious. Uh, evidence? I am willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. Actually, no, scrap this. Uh, I, no, 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 I'm not scrapping them. If, it, if, if, if that's the wrong episode number, I'll correct it in the description. I'll make a funny joke out of it. But, anyways, yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. Unless you have Maya! This has all been a wild goose from the beginning. <laughs> to shame this guy! Uh, of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean, there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Archworth? I mean, the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He, he may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. Somehow. That's... That's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possible ill you left for you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? <laughs> I gotta think back before her. Is the jar... The victim... Yes. Is it... Darn it. Is in the evidence. Basically, this message from the deceased is already ever said, Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister's a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss God. Our purpose is not to accuse them of any crime. There's only one thing we seek. That's true. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show us this piece of evidence. The message of, this is the message of my disease. Is that the blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak of the killer? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing good, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone forgot about that this is just a jar. The message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on the jar. It looks like, it looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood on some of the fragments uh, is not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here drawn by the blood. Sir, what you're saying is that these dots were once lines. Oscar Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left left to him to leave behind a message. Oh, one that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar when the line changed direction. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. And the victim's message will become apparent. No, no. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor? I believe these bloodstains will reveal that answer. The murderer's name. Yes. Yeah, you can't connect the E for some odd reason. Yes. Ah, goody goody. Ah, oh, yes. This is it. What do you think? I can't with this message. Come on. Hmm. Yes. I feel like I'm teaching handwriting to a student who is all thumbs. I think you should make him write out. I will do it again when I do that. I never was much good at handwriting. I guess I'll check the court record. Ah, 
I know it, Emma! I know it's Emma! No. Oh, yes. I know it, Emma! I forgot to put the damn timer on. Okay. I know this is it. Ah, sweet. Oh, right. It's not big A, it's a little A. This is it! Yeah! I was filling it up, but yet- Oh! Conrad with the judge has been sneaky with his handwriting! It's a defense attorney's duty to prove his client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. See, you are the can't say I didn't warn you. Chief can't. Do you I, do you understand the implications of what you've done? You screwed over Lana! You screwed over Lana and Emma! How do you feel about yourself? How do you sleep at night, Worthy? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in that case, were you not? Ah! Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction! <laughs> but Joe Dark really was a serial murderer! That's undeniable! I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no lot matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence for tree, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's, go what's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death! How could he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, 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 ORDER! I got chip my teeth. The ju the guy was pounding fell in death ears. I able to sell the crime, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one will know. No one knows. No, I don't want to save the game. Are you enjoying this? Twenty fifth. 1206, District Court, Defending, Defendant Lobby Number 2. What's wrong with me? Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Hmm. Don't worry about it. 
This is my problem, not yours. Oh my god, you're updating pals! Oh, guess I am! I'll come back later! Oh, you take the gumshoe, what is it? You got one now, pal! Make it to take the run around all run all around while on duty! And drop it off you call me here! I've seen happier people at funerals! I take it long as having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal! Yes, guy out of my teeth. Okay, with a cedar spice from my, the calibers I had earlier. Yes, she asked me to give you this so, to you so that. Eh, she asked me to give this to you if there was a break in this job. I'm sure what's wrong with you. Why can't you? I'm sure what's wrong. Why can't you speak properly for once? I'm because I, I, I have an iron deficiency, Miss I, I feel like I'm going to die any second. Thank you for those pay cuts. And it's law. Edwards was talking about this the other day. I'm sure you know the true rules of evidence law, don't you, right? Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. It is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You can at least say some evidence law, really? The chief prosecutor doesn't want me to give you a message. A message? She says, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. Him? I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. He really slips evidence law in the pocket. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is the chief brought to your sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Huh? How did you figure it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat? Despite all these allegations being thrown at me? Mr. Edgeway! The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility is all but ruined with this voice evidence you were unaware of. And this guy just found out that she unwillingly caused a man's death! And now, you're telling me you want to do more?! You gotta be kidding me, pal! You're missing the point, Detective! Why did they murder Detective Goodman? She merely stuck a knife into his dead body! That means the real killer is still out there. What?! And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. February 25th, 1252, District Court, courtroom number 9. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. The Inquiry Committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your action. Dang, that's our... <laughs> yes, please. I am always the... I'm always there when you mention Inquiry Committees. I rule it all, you know. You see, I'm a very important guy at the prosecutor's office. All the women, they want to do me, and all the men want to be me. <laughs> but no one can be me. No, well, you see, no one can be the best. After all, you're born the best, you know. Or you're born nothing. <laughs> Thank you for the usual honor. Yes, well, uh -huh. <coughs> Sorry, I have to call. <coughs> <coughs> Normally, this is where the prosecution calls for the witness. But, uh <coughs> <laughs> I'm not doing a little jam and cough, otherwise I'll go on a, I'll go on a coughing jag. This is you say, uh, you see, there is some concern that Mr. Edgeworth may have, uh, struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, uh, everyone has been talking and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But that's never been a, but there's never been a case example. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with any witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The, uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright? You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial will be as it goes over. Defense calls... Taman Gent. Yeah, I present him. I'm not risking any... I'm not risking anything. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. Damon Gant? What do you, what's he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, 
Mr. Gan has first-hand knowledge of the crime. You wish should hear what he has to say about it. As luck would have it, he would, should still be at the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. You want to agree, Your Honor? True. Alright, Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Witness, please take your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch! I was going to get a Reuben! Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Because I can ruin your life. Trust me, Worthy, I have known you since you first came to you first were taken in by Manny. I could reveal secrets to this court. I could reveal years of secrets and years of trash that Manny has told me about you. And I could use it to ruin you. Would you like me to ruin you, Worthy? Because I don't think you want me to ruin you. I, I don't want to ruin you. I just want to go eat my Reuben. I want to go and eat a nice Reuben. I want melted cheese and a robot and some not and a, on a panini bread. I'm pretty really. You ever have a panini bread? It's worth a, it, It's really good. I mean, you get one of those panini makers. What? Let me tell you, technology has really changed in my day. I mean, you want a toasted bread, you put it in the toaster, but now you just have like one of those breads, and boom, your sandwich is already cooked for you. Well, okay, what's next, Worthy? Okay, that was weird. Your name and occupation! So, you want to play hardball, eh? Well, please, Mr. Gant. <laughs> my name is Dan Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, righto! What's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been pretty, pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you play in all this. Oh, but before that, let's just take a quick look at the evidence law. Rule 1, without the pool, the police department under charge must be relevant to the trial. Come on, I don't want to do that. But wait, is that chick holding it? I never really checked. Come on. Is that a chick with a pencil? I'm not even sure what that is. Is that like a chick holding a pencil? Is that, is that a chick? I'm not even sure. I'm pretty sure it's not an effing duck. Yeah, I'm bringing back Evan Duck. It may have been, uh, it may have been about two series, but it's back. Evan Duck is back. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish or both. You are aware, of course, that pol uh, police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Yes, Rado! Like bear mace! You know, the kind of mace they use on bears? I have three cans in my office! Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't wanna. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with its own risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember. If, the ch if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, he slipped up. That power I was didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was on the floor, unconscious. When Emma sent Neil flying, it's in Dark Bump. It seemed Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better him hard and fast. SL9 incident. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. 
But that probably what that's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. And it didn't help that I had that I had my not sick. I was like, I was brain shit. Dark now Neil, he was being the good cop and all this, but I I could be the good cop or the bad guy. You know, it was funny. Normally during investigations, Lana was the bad cop, and I'd be the good cop. I'd be like, Look at here, buddy, you better just tell me the truth because I don't want to leave you alone with my partner. You don't know what you can do. Look at those eyes. Not the eyes of a woman who would just snap your balls off with just her bare head. She just like she rip them off like grapes off the vine. You wanna end up with your grapeless vine? I don't think so. So just tell me the truth and we'll go out swimming. Got it? I I'll buy you poodles, I'll buy you a soda, I'll buy you a soda pop at the pool. That sounds good, right? What's the defendant? No, this guy. Also person in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made to the elevator first, so Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say. He got lucky! What's this about the power outage? Oh, that. The other stopped all of a sudden, and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neil was when that knife went through his heart, though. That's not funny. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and I, Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying glass on the floor. Yes, apparently he is, and it was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls, Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling them in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Like I said, I know that it's going to be present the pot, present the jar to to Gant, but I want to do all of his things, because really, so, he is Gant's one of my favorite villains in the series. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body, it had already been moved. So that means, you found the body near Lana's desk. That's right, that's right. I think you said earlier, it was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyways, as the had nothing to do with the forgery. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office. That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving up by and high in the heavens are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Unless you're Manny. Manny, he did it with class. Is that really how it went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stand anything, you better you're better off staring at the court record. Were they were they? Always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence. That can't be the whole truth. Someone now I gotta link Gant to that incident. Yes, you got to present. You now you may be thinking, oh, I have to present the strip of cloth. But you have to remember evidence law. We we found this in the safe. We don't we can't tie it to the lid. However, we can tie this unstable jar. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery, but I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar for example. That's the blue bugs you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that. But the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gantz, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in this illegal investigation. Chief Gantz, what's the meaning of this? Ho! Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival, rival worthy! So you admit to it then. You were involved in the forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who jumped into my office when you found this evidence. 
Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Just wait until April 19th, 2019, Rado. Defensors can do so too. Isn't that right, Rado? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Were they, my boy? Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. <laughs> Though, suffice to say, it's gonna be pretty hard to find a way to punish him that you have. Because, I mean, look at him, were they? You already destroyed his mind, body, and soul. What? What? If Detective Gumshoe Star drops any further, he'll end up paying for work! <laughs> Yes, well, in light of the defense detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office, and the relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my, kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list. For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. And it was you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participate in a forgery. Rare Ranger crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm. Mr. White. Yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I am the Chief of Police, right? There will be consequences. Oh, indeed, I believe I will press charges, so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Day is, well, you know. Alright, OG, in return, though! I know, I know. That place, right? Huh? What are these guys tell? What, are these guys telepathic? Swimming gives you that ability, right? I'm like Aquaman! The judge is like a port- is like my porpoise sidekick! Right, OG? I give him a fish, he goes out and swims and just does things. I don't know, he plays with the ball. I, I, I don't know, I, I haven't played that far ahead. I'd appreciate if you stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, if, yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? Oh, how do you know? Back in the day, I once broke into a cow ranch and tipped. But Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove that you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you can prove you to the contrary, you're gonna need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when your fingerprints are found. Yes, if they're found at Damase, they would prove your investigation was illegal. Grr! I've never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the moment when you realize that Dance is actually on like a, in Phoenix's mind on a higher tier than Manfred. What do you mean by that? Because essentially, in a way, Gant is a more mellow version of Manfred with actual social skills. This is all purely hypothetical, of course, but suppose I did play those eyes in my sake. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence by a crime scene isn't forgery, I'm not through speaking yet, Mr. Rot. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. And they're about to dark with yes. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the illegal in initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in that evidence list. For all we know, it could have materialized the day after dark was sentenced. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The chief is talking about a possibility, so long as you can't rule that out. Your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Mr. Ra, think about it. How can you look at me and say that? Because I'm innocent! Remember, who was it that murdered Neil? Uh, I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Well, now you see. R really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there was one large benefit you reaped on this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this a benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh, 
the re the resolution of the SL9 incident secured your promotion to chief. That in itself is a sufficient motive. Oh, 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 oh that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already on to become the next chief. I mean, for God's sake, I had the chief. I was. I knew the chief prosecutor. <coughs> we had like that team are going on. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edward? Yes. He was going to be made chief anyways. Gah! Be careful when boy that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means. There's only one possible possible motive for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then who you did for someone else? Don't be silly, worthy. You know me better than that. There's only three people I look out for: me, myself, and I. There, there is Ali open now. Archie, oh, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lyle's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be locked enough on yourself, though. <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one, Worley. Hmm. There have been something in it for him. Getting to selfish is what it and help someone out. Point out accomplice. True, you might not help anyone out for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people hand. That's not what I mean! Very well, ask. Who is this person that you believe may have helped get for Jim? Chief Foster won a sky. Is it an offendant? I believe it's quite obvious in light of, cir of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for the chief and as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. So profit? What do you mean? We'll answer that next time! Anyways, I really appreciate that you took on to watch this episode. You're a great viewer. I hope you come back to the next one. If you like the video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. With will see you later. Bye!